This is Karen with NewClevelandRadio.net, and it is time for Avoid the Maze. Now, if you haven't listened to Avoid the Maze prior to today, you're going to find out it's about a journey. We're all on a journey through life. And as we go through life, our journey changes. I know as a young girl, I thought I knew exactly who I was going to be when I grew up. I knew how many kids I was going to have, what my husband was going to look like, and what that white picket fence looked like. But the funny thing is, um, not only have I had two husbands, and actually the second one, he's he's forever. Uh, 38 years, I, I don't think I'm looking for another. But my journey was nothing like I thought it was going to be. So I invite guests on our show to talk about their journey. And today I have Mandy Nattel. Did I say it right? Nuttle, like subtle. Okay. Well, I tried. It was making it fancy for her. (laughs) Um, I met Mandy on podmatch.com. When I read her bio, it was like, wow, you know, what a mom. I mean, You've 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 gone through a lot a lot of things and you're doing a lot and you've written a book series. So tell us how you got from that little girl Mandy to Mom Mandy and an author. I did not think as a little Mandy I was going to be an author. <laughs> I I had the the drive and the ambition and and that mainly grew post college. But I grew up. Um, I grew up with a decent education from my parents about who I am and my body and very, very spiritually minded, but not necessarily body minded. Um, I was an athlete, so I was very aware of my capabilities and, you know, how food affected my performance and how exercise and all of these things. And I was fascinated with body systems. I loved anatomy and physiology. It was absolutely fascinating to learn these things. And um, in college, I, I changed my major from sports, um, sports medicine to health education because I took a class called human sexuality. And I did not, at first I was very nervous. I was a very um, a conservative. I grew up very conservative, religious, and I was a little nervous for this class, but I was excited. It was something new. So I took this class and it wasn't necessarily the content that we talked about. It was the teacher. Uh, she was incredible. She taught with so much enthusiasm on the topic and an admiration of what our bodies are capable of. And it changed my outlook on, on the body and, and on, on what I wanted to focus on my life uh, on not sports medicine, but I wanted to teach health. I wanted to teach about the body because I wanted to teach the way that she taught because she totally impacted and changed my life. So I changed it to health education and I became a high school sex ed teacher. I mean, wow, <laughs> I was not planning on that. I wasn't. And it was once I started teaching, I knew right away, this is cool. This is cool because I saw changes in these students. I saw their attention so focused on what I'm talking about because it was so relevant to them and it was important to them. Their bodies are the one thing that they completely own that is theirs. And I was teaching them about it. So it was fascinating. Um, I didn't teach that long uh, because I started my family and my family quickly grew. Um, But I I remember right before I retired, (laughs) I held my son up. He was three months old in front of my class. And I just held him up like Simba. I'm like, guys, this little boy here, (laughs) I am going to teach him about his body. He is going to understand it. He's going to know about it. And when he gets in his health class in high school, he is going to feel confident, not embarrassed. He's going to know all the things about his body. And that was kind of my, my pledge to them. And it's carried on. And now somehow we have five kids. (laughs) Wow. I don't know what happened, but someone didn't warn me that it's really easy to release two eggs at the same time. And we (laughs) went from three to five kids really fast with our twins. So, So, you know, I find it interesting because um, I was born in the 50s. Um, My mother and father really didn't tell me much about my body when I was growing up. Um, I knew certain things. I knew that, you know, you should sit ladylike. You should, you know, cross your legs, make sure that, you know, your skirt was not up, um, things like that. But other than that, uh, when I started puberty, I really had no idea. 
Um, and my girlfriends didn't really talk about maybe what they knew. And um, I realized as I got older, and especially when I went to college, that I had friends who, you know, looked at themselves in the mirror and I didn't, you know, it was like, well, I'm not ashamed, but what am I looking at? Mm -hmm. And so I really understand when you say you held your son up and you said, I'm going to teach him about his body. That is so important because some of us don't even know what's going on inside of us or even on the outside. So you say some of us, but do you want to hear some numbers of some research? Yeah, absolutely. That I did? Yes, absolutely. So I interviewed, I interviewed 126 current parents. So, um, and I asked them what their education was like from their parents. So a generation before mine and the numbers just broke my heart. I asked them, um, and I'll let you guess here. What percentage do you think said that they felt comfortable talking with their parents about their body? What percentage of current parents right now? maybe 10%. I think that's a little more accurate than the numbers. I got 23%. Only 23% felt comfortable talking to their parents about their body. And this is the, such an important topic. This is our body. It's not a secret. Every single person has one, right? right? Exactly. We, exactly. We all have a body, but only 23% felt comfortable. And then I also asked, um, did they feel educated about their body? And only 21% said that they did. So again, a huge ball dropped right. in that generation. Now this generation, my current generation who are parents right now um, with kids who are still living at home, from what I have found, most want to, most want to, but most have their upbringing of being uneducated, shameful, nervous. It's awkward. And, and I'm trying to teach parents that your kids are born without any of that. And you don't have to give your kid any shame or awkward. And I'm not talking about like, let's go around naked and I'll just, Hey right. guys, look at my body. But <laughs> my, my, um, my mantra that I'd like to teach is you respect what you understand. If you want your children to respect their body, if you want them to honor it, to respect others' bodies, they've got to understand it. I like to use the analogy of say your dad got a really nice car or your mom and dad got a really nice car. Would you be more likely to go and take that out for a joy ride if it just showed up and you're like, hey, cool. Or say they got a car that they needed to restore and you spent years restoring this car, learning about how to put it together, learning about how to make things work so the car can actually function. Who's more likely to take a car out for a joyride? One who's really studied and understands it and just puts work into it, or one where it just shows up and is like, oh, that's shiny and fancy. Let's go. Yeah. So you respect what you understand. And this is what I'm trying to teach parents. Teach our kids about their body. And this will lead to more respect and more honoring of our body. I totally saw this in my classrooms. Um, the kids who were, one, good students, not messing around in class who really, you could just tell they understood it. It made sense to them. Um, those were the kids I knew they were taught at home. The ones who were completely ignorant and disrespectful and not appropriate, things like that, they didn't understand it. And that's why they were being disrespectful. Sorry, well, that was a lot. <laughs> well, but, and, and I understand that because when you don't understand something, um, you have a tendency to laugh to make fun of it um, because because you're nervous you, yeah. exactly um, I you know it's very strange I remember I had a college roommate and she said to me one day she said why don't you use a Tampax and my mother never offered me to have Tampax and um, I just never understood at 18 years old how I would even use this thing. And I said that to her and she said, well, then we're going to have a class tonight. <laughs> and it was like, okay. And she took a mirror off the wall and laid it horizontally. Um, and we all were in the hallway and she said, you can laugh, you can giggle. She said, but this is how my mother taught me. And 
we were all totally embarrassed, okay? But within a month, all of us were using Tampax. Because- and that changed your life, I'm <laughs> sure. <laughs> and I remember going home and saying something to my mother on a break. And she goes, oh, you know how to use it? And I said, yes. And she said, can you show me? And oh. I that was the first time my mother and I truly had a connection about our bodies. Uh, I don't think we ever did it again. Um, but it was like, I was embarrassed, but I was like, well, hey, I get to show my mother something. So I'm going to do it. I'm a, I'm a big shot. But I realized that so much has changed through the years. But the most important thing is what you're talking about is if we understand our bodies, we're not afraid of them. And we are going to respect them more. And if we respect our own body, that means I'm going to respect yours as well. Yeah. And then you can teach your children to do that. Your mom, she didn't teach you because she wasn't taught. Right. I mean, it makes, it makes so much sense. So we can't teach what we don't know, obviously. So there's so much that, and and there were um, so many parents that had the same story. So many of your generation of my generation, I wasn't even taught. My parents didn't say a word to me. It was night of my wedding. And my mom's like, Hey, let's have a talk. And you're like, Whoa, 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 (laughs) not, not the right time, not the right time. Um, so I'm trying to give parents kind of a kick in the pants that guys, you can do this. You don't have to teach shame. You can teach to honor and you can, you can teach it in a way where it's so exciting and so beautiful and not, not this uncomfortable thing that we associate it with. So that's my mission. That's what I'm trying to do. So how did you develop the book then? Okay. That's a great question. So you knew from the very beginning, I wanted to teach them. So I had all of the material that I taught in my high school health class, which was a lot. I taught about body systems, about nutrition and drugs and mental health and all of these things. But I had everything that I wanted to teach my kids. And that that pile of information was just growing. I wanted to teach them about manners, about, you know, how to be a good partner, how to date, how to all the, I had all of these things that I wanted to teach. And I was like, I can't teach this in one big sex talk. I can't teach all this information. So I just made this huge analogy, a bucket of information and I spread it all out and I put it in a category of each year of their development. If I want my kid to learn about sex when they're nine years old, what information do they need to know before then? And so I just laid it out as a lesson for each year so that I could teach everything that I wanted to and make sure that I had it all as a teacher. That's what you do. You plan your lessons. You make sure you get it all in there and had these yearly lesson plans. And it just evolved to being something that I could give to other parents that they could teach this lesson plan and say, ask this question right here. What is your family value on this topic? ask this question, show this picture, like a complete easy lesson plan so that they can confidently teach their kids every year and they wouldn't leave anything out. And I noticed with my own kids, my, my oldest son, I did a good job teaching him. The second, it was a little bit different. I'd already taught one lesson. I kind of felt like, Hey, I did a good job. And I started slacking on her, not because I wanted to, but because you have two kids and life's crazy. Right. So I just, I needed something to help me stay on track. Okay. She's three. I teach this. She's seven. I teach this so that I wouldn't teach the second any different than I taught my first. And now that I have five, holy cow, it is so (laughs) helpful to have this because there's no way I could remember what I've taught who or what or when or what their names are. (laughs) So what are their age ranges? So my son's almost 14 and then I have a 12 year old daughter and an almost eight-year-old son. And then the twins are now five. So, so we got, we got a wide, wide variety. You have wide yeah. variety. Um, so do th- your older kids also help teach the younger kids? No, no. We've taught them that learning about their body is not a secret, but it is special. So it's not up to them to teach others about their body. Okay. Um, 
like at school, like when we taught them about sex, we said, this is not something that you go to school and talk about guys, this is private. And each parents, this is their responsibility to teach their kids. It's not up to you to go and educate everyone. Um, but this is what, you know, you hold on to that knowledge and we will teach our children the other topics. So each lesson that we have is a one-on-one -on -one with that child special moment. And we do it. I've called the book is called the birthday soup book. So we do it on every birthday and we have this moment where we're together. We bring a nice treat. We just have a one-on-one -on -one child and mom and dad time where we discuss about their body. It's the, none of the other kids are present. It's just quality time with just that child. And that's really important um, to me because you'd think it'd be easy to have quality time with a child, but it's actually really mm -hmm. difficult right. where it's like, only your attention on them, no other distractions where you just spend a good hour or two with them. So we, we tell them it's not up to them to teach others that this is, this is their information. And if anybody has a question or ask something to them, or they hear something, they should say, I think you should probably go ask your parents about that and they can talk to you. And, you know, I, I love that concept because, um, as I said to you before we went live, um, when my son was in, I think it was fifth grade. So he was right around 11 years old. Um, and he went to the orientation for, I, I don't know if it was called body health or sex education or what it was called back then. Um, he went with his dad and, uh, you know, he kept saying he didn't need this because he already knew it. And we sat him down and we asked him, well, how do you know it? And uh, he absorbs everything. So bits and pieces he had learned all over the place. And so we asked him to tell him what he knew and he did. And he was very um, mature about it when he was talking to us. But we also basically said the same thing. Please don't repeat any of this in class. What you learn in class, you can, you can repeat in class and ask questions, but not what you're taking from here. And he looked at us and he goes, well, I, I already know it. I don't need the class. We said, but you're going to have to take the class. As it turned out, we ended up teaching him at home, which was very difficult for us based on the information that you showed that if I didn't have that education, mm -hmm. how can I really teach him? You know, I can teach him about what I believe morals are and how you should respect your body. But I didn't know if I was coming across acting shameful or, or flaunting, you know, I was like in that middle place and it was like, I want to do this right. Um, as a 31 year old young man, he's doing very well. Um, and he's very respectful. In fact, girls tell him he's too respectful. I'm not <laughs> quite sure what that means, but I'll oh, take it. <laughs> great. My, my goal is that people say his mama taught him, right? Yep. That's, that's my goal. So it sounds like that's what you've done. Absolutely. So let's talk about your twins because obviously they have the same birthday. You separate them obviously for mm -hmm. this conversation as well. Yeah, definitely. The twins, um, I try to have the lessons are, are planned out so that you teach only their body's anatomy up till age six. So right now they're still learning just their anatomy. However, I have a very unique situation where they're twins and they're naked all the time. So they, they, they can see that there is a difference in their twin. They're always together, but most people don't have boy, girl twins, right? Yeah. So, um, you teach just their their gender's anatomy up till age six. And then you start learning both because it's important to understand both um, when you start teaching about sex. So the cool thing is from six, seven and eight, those three lessons, they learn so much about the body so that when they do learn about sex, it makes sense. And let me talk about just the, my philosophy on how to teach sure. about sex here. Um, if you just try to teach what you think sex is, as an adult, it's going to be so confusing to a child. We have so many, our past feelings, our current feelings, any trauma that we've had, any shame that we've had growing up. And if you try to put that into a sentence to answer a child, child's question of what sex is, that's going to be so confusing. So I break it down to be the most easy, simple core purpose of what sex is. And if you look at it this way, it's so much more fun. 
Sex is the act of creating life. If you look at it like that, then you can talk about DNA development, child growth, pregnancy delivery, and to a kid, that's fascinating. So what we do is lessons six, seven, and eight, those are all talking about DNA. Where do your DNA come from? Where comes from? Where does your, your traits come from? Um, then you go into that comes from egg and a sperm. Where do the egg and sperm come from? Where is that anatomy on the body? And then we go into fetal development, fertilization. When the, when the egg and the sperm combine, it grows and grows into a baby. And how does it grow during pregnancy? What happens to the mom? How does the baby come out? All of this before you teach what sex is. So when you do get to lesson nine, it just makes complete sense. And they're like, oh, this is how it starts the whole process. This is the act of creating life. And if you have that foundation of that's what sex is growing up and going into your teenage years, there's so much more respect for it. Sex is creating a life. That's, that's the purpose. That's what it's mainly used for. Yes. As you get older, you can teach more about intimacy and relationships and things like that. And every family is different on what their values are. And I totally respect that. But when they have that core foundation that sex is meant to create life, um, that you can just see the amount of respect, the, the new level of respect when you look at it that way. And, and, you know, initially when I heard you say that, I had my back up. But as you continued it, it was like, it totally makes sense. Because number one, if we're teaching it early on, you, you need a basis for, for it. You know, if you said it's for, because you love somebody, yeah. you're, you're going to see six and seven year olds trying to have sex. I mean, well, yeah. let, have yeah. you ever told yeah. your child you love them? Yeah, exactly. Or some parents said it's what two adults do when they share a bed. It's yeah. what you do when you're married. Like, have you ever shared a bed with a child? Yeah. You're yeah. always, so they can relate to that, it, but they, creating life. That's something that's way out of their wheelhouse, <laughs> but it's cool. It's fascinating. Right. Exactly. Um, so like I said, my initial thought was, Hmm, you know, but as you explained it, it was like, wow, this makes so much sense. Um, it, as you agree, we all have a different value as we get older and then it's up to us to identify that. But I think if I could have understood that as a young child, that would have been much easier for me, much, yeah. much easier, um, yeah. because everything really was a secret. You know, you mentioned that, you know, your mother said to you on your wedding day, you know, we have to have the talk. Um, my mother did that to my older brother and um, his wife uh, the night before their wedding. And... Um, <laughs> And I was told I had to leave the room and my other brother was told he had to leave the room. My other brother sort of hid and listened. Uh, I went upstairs, I was the good girl, I didn't listen. Um, but I asked for years, what was it all about? And I was told, oh, someday she'll have the talk with you. My mother never did. Mm. Uh, but maybe she figured I already knew it, I have no idea. But so many of us lost out on those important moments. And I can see it in your, in your eyes when you talk about having that special time and making it on their birthday is even more special because it's like, this is where you're going at this point of your life. So this is yeah. some more information. Love it. Yes. I, I so, I so agree with that. And my other mission is what I'm trying to teach parents is when I was teaching, I had taught with 36 kids in front of me at the same time. And we created such a special bond with each one of these kids so much that during lunchtime, I didn't get to have lunch because they were all still in my classroom telling me about their life, asking me questions, not necessarily about our lessons, but just about life. We bonded and connected in a really special way. And I mean, it was cool that I could be that for them, but if you do not bond with your child and talking about their body, they will find something else or someone else or an app or an online entity 
or that could be a predator or porn or whatever, they will put their trust into someone else if they can't put it with their parents. And I, I just want to share and shout from the rooftops, you, there's a huge golden nugget opportunity to connect with your child and to create this relationship with your child. And don't pass that up. Don't let that go. It's a, it's such a powerful connection. If you can feel comfortable talking to your parent about your body. And like you said, that one moment that you had with your mom, where she's like, can you teach me? That was a mo that's probably an anchor moment in your life, oh, right? Absolutely. Because like I said, it never happened in any other form again. Um, and I really had suppressed it, you know, it happened and that was it. Um, when my mother was dying, uh, I spent two and a half months with her. And uh, one day she, she asked me some, oh, I know what it was. Um, she was bedridden. She didn't really realize it, you know, that she was really confined to bed. And she was trying to adjust herself and she exposed herself. And I said, mom, I'm going to help cover you up. And she goes, well, you've seen them before. And, you know, and then she opened up her shirt more for me. And I said, yes, I have. I said, so now we're going to, we're going to cover you up. And she goes, okay, I guess you should. And I realized that we didn't in our house. I'm not going to say we were overly modest, but we were modest enough that, you know, I wouldn't have seen my mother getting out of a bathtub or a shower. There's just not what we did. Now I have friends who said that's how they lived in their, their family, you know, their bodies were respected, but you know, they did walk around without their clothes on or just a towel around them. Again, that's it. That's for each family. Okay. Yeah. And those are the conversations, those special conversations that you have with your kids, what is appropriate, what is not so that they're not ashamed. Yeah. Now on that, what is appropriate um, another bit of advice I have for parents as they go in their teenage years and you're talking about sex with teens, um, it's really confusing and really dangerous, not necessarily dangerous, but if you just tell a child don't have sex until dot, 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 don't have sex till you, it's not good. Don't do it until you're married or don't do it until you love whatever, whatever your, your values are. If you tell a kid not to do something. What, what do kids like to do? <laughs> of course they want to do it. They, they want to do it. Um, I've known many, many women um, who were absent until they were married. Uh, they were so scared of sex, so scared. And they spent years and years and years struggling with sex with their spouse because they just felt like it was bad. Sex was bad. Don't have sex. Don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, you're married. Go ahead. Yeah. Like that's a hard mental shift. Absolutely. So Instead, if we can teach kids, sex is appropriate when sex is beautiful, wonderful, powerful. It's the most connected you can ever be to another person. And that is appropriate when, so that there's not this shame feeling about it. It's not bad until it's good. It's always wonderful, good, but when is it appropriate? When is it okay to have sex? It's just a different way to look at it and a different way to teach kids because saying, don't have sex, but, but if you do wear a condom, but, but people who have sex, they're really promiscuous. You don't want to be like that. But if you do make sure you're safe, that is so contradictory. You've got to be really careful how we're teaching them. We got to be very clear. Sex is appropriate when, and then insert your family values. I love it. So the book, is it a series or is it one book? Uh, I just published last year, the birthday suit book one, and these are lessons one through nine, the first nine years of your child's life. And then book two will come out this summer for ages 10 through 18. So for the teenage years. So yes, there is a series. And then I also have, um, books that can help out the family values journal, uh, where you write down all of your values from each lesson and you give them to your kids. So you can have all of these things, like when is it appropriate to look at my genitals? Should I be touching my genital? Like things like that, that are all family values topics. You write them down, you put them in this journal and you hand them to your kids so that they know what your family's values are. Because if you're not completely clear on your values, how are your kids going to be clear on them? Absolutely. 
And, you know, I, I used to hate hearing how certain parents would say, well, I told you not to do something. Okay. Um, and you know, my, I don't think my parents ever said, you know, I shouldn't have sex before marriage, but it was implied. It was implied. You'll know when it's the right time. Um, and a couple of times I do remember asking my older brother, when will I know? And his comment to me is when you meet the right person and you really are in love. And every time I'd go out with a guy, I'd come back and say, well, I didn't have sex with him because I wasn't in love with him. And my brother <laughs> and my brother would just laugh at me and would be like, well, I guess I'm teaching her right. Um, but I didn't have that fear. Okay. Is, now it's now you're married and now you can do this. So, uh, but I do know that I did have friends who learned that lesson and it was a tough one for them. Yeah. So, well, I want to thank you for sharing all this. How can our listeners find you? Oh, the birthday has many resources. I try to help parents out with not only getting their book, um, but also many interviews from parents, some resources, what apps are dangerous for our kids? What are some language that kids are using that we don't understand in our generation? Cause they're talking in emojis and different, different language. Um, try to help parents with all of these things so that they can be the best resource for their kids. So their kids can see them as a source that they can trust. Um, I'm also available on Instagram and Facebook at the birthday suit books. Uh, lots of good tips and things on there to help be the best parents that we can be. Well, I certainly appreciate it. We'll put all that in the show notes. We encourage parents and grandparents to check out the information. You know, if your children aren't teaching it, um, you know, maybe there can be a conversation about grandparents getting involved because our kids need to need to feel good about themselves. And um, if you don't have the knowledge, it's very, very difficult. So I think we're very lucky. I think there's going to be five young children growing into teens and adults who will have a lot of respect for their body, for their life, and they will share that with others to come. Yeah. I will do my best. I will do my best. And I love what you said about grandparents. If you feel at all that your children could use any more education, if you did not do everything that you possibly could, and if you feel, Hey, this could help my grandchildren, I can make a difference in my grandchildren's life. This is how give this book to your children, um, your adult children, your parents, your children who are parents, uh, so they can teach your grandchildren and we can just make each generation more respectful. Well, we certainly appreciate you. Have a great day and say hi to the kids for us, okay? I will. Thank you All so right. much for having me. Sure. Bye-bye now. Bye.